wow, wow. Can you believe it? I'm telling you, this guy is the best goalkeeper in Africa. One of the best, greatest goalkeepers in Africa I've seen for a long, long time. And this was before the penalty shootout even happened. What a man. Of course, I'm talking about Mr. Ron Wen Williams. Oh my God. He's kept four clean sheets out of five. And now he saved four penalties out of five. Have you ever seen anything like it? Ron Wen Williams. I'm sorry. It's down to him that South Africa are AFCON semi-finalists again. Wow. They've beaten Cape Verde in the penalty shootout and that's no easy team to beat. The fact that they took them to penalties itself was brilliant. And it was also once again down to Ron Wynn Williams. The save he made from Benjamin, he tipped it onto the bar and then he caught it like nothing had happened. And that was just to take the game to extra time. I'm telling you, whatever happens from now to the end of the tournament, whoever wins it, Ron Wynn Williams is the goalkeeper of the tournament. This guy is absolutely world class. I know he's in goal for sundowns or whatever. This guy should be in the English Premier League, let alone the South African League. He is unreal. Oh, what a tournament. This is his tournament. And who's to say he can't do it again in the semi-finals against Nigeria? If you don't know what's happened, where have you been? What a couple of days of AFCON quarterfinals it has been. So South Africa defeats Cape Verde on penalties, but Ron Wynn Williams made an unreal save from Ben Chamo in normal time to tip it on the bar and then catch it. And then after that, Hugo Bruce made some big changes. He took off Percy Tau. I think he took off Zvane as well. Took it to penalties and even as extra time just started, South Africa should have probably scored. Again, really two good saves from Vozinha in the Cape Verde goal. But after that, it's all about one man, Ron Wynn. The fact that Cape Verde put three pens in the same corner every time. And even the one he didn't save, he actually got so close to it, he nearly saved it as well. But what were Cape Verde doing? No wonder Bebe was benched. He had a shot every time he had the ball, no matter own half, own box, Bebe was shooting. And then he comes and steps up first for the penalty shootout, misses that as well, thanks to the save from what Ronwen Williams. But you gotta say, Hugo Bruce won the cup with Cameroon in 2017. Who's to say he can't win it? with uh, this South Africa side. He's done the hard bit. Let's, let's look at their run to the tournament. They lost to Mali and Percy Tau missed, missed a penalty. So on another day, that could have been different. And Mali are a good team, as we saw in their quarterfinal. Then they smashed, completely annihilated Namibia 4-0. That's the Nam Namibia that just beat Tunisia. Then Tunisia, who had to throw the kitchen sink at South Africa, they drew to them. Um, another clean sheet. Then they beat Morocco, not by luck, but in style. And 2-0, brilliant free kick from McKenna in that game. And again, a clean sheet for Ronwen Williams. And then Cape Verde, who won Group B above Egypt and Ghana, couldn't score past that entire South Africa. Not just the keeper, I think the back four is all sundowns as well. What a job that Hugo Bruce has done there. And now they find themselves in the semi-finals against Nigeria. Of course, a repeat of the AFCON 2019 quarterfinal where Nigeria won it very late on. Can South Africa get their revenge? I'm sure Dr. Patrice, the CAF president, will be hoping so, but can we just talk about some of the saves Williams made? Like, in the shootout, the audacity for him to go the same way for the first three pens, save all of them, then go the other way for the fourth pen, narrowly miss it, and then save the fifth pen. I'm sorry, this keeper is world-class. He's actually world-class, so I salute Ronwen Williams. He's going to be remembered for a long time. South African people are going to remember him for a long time but wow I'm sure in terms of the rest of the team there'll be a lot of talk about what team should Hugo Bruce play in that semi-final should evidence get another start I'm sure the South African fan base are still divided on him we see um, the unfortunate hamstring injury towards the end of the game where the substitute had to be subbed so there's certainly some big decisions for Hugo Bruce to be made but a word on Cape Verde a quarter-final exit on penalties that's no shame they cannot hang their heads in shame the pens were poor but they had a brilliant tournament which wasn't poor at all so we know one semi-final is going to be Nigeria against South Africa the other one is going to be Cote d'Ivoire against DR Congo how on earth Cote d'Ivoire have stayed in this competition after getting three points in the group stage they lost two games they've only won one game in 90 minutes and that was on the first day of the tournament they took out Senegal on pens the ref for that game has been suspended and sent home this Mali game I'm sorry but Mali only have themselves to blame Mali threw that game away they missed the pen like uh, from Traore, what, what's he doing? It's a poor pen. Yahya Fofana, 
becoming the hero once again after the pens in the shootout against Senegal, now the pen in the game. Um, and then Kasuno gets sent off for Ivory Coast. Second yellow, clumsy. The free kick is uh, poor, but nonetheless, Mali end up taking the lead. What a strike from the second half substitute. That was a fantastic strike. He didn't want to celebrate because I think he was born in Ivory Coast. A lot of those Mali players, even Basuma, seem to be born in Cote d'Ivoire, so clearly a, a strong link geographically between the two nations. How did Mali not put that game to bed? Once again, we see the impact of Cote d'Ivoire when they keep Adingra and Haller fit. When they come on the pitch, it's a different game. Haller hit the crossbar even before Ivory Coast won the game. He's such a threat, such a presence. And Adingra from Brighton, what a goal. It's his dribble that leads actually to Fafana's shot. Fafana's shot falls in the path of Adingra. Quick thinking, bang, it's heartbreak for Mali. And the two changes Eric Schell made just before the goal came back to bite him. But Mali, man, they threw it away. They should have been 3-0 up at half time. They should have won the game 4-0, like Equatorial Guinea did. How have they gone out? They only have themselves to blame. They should have put the game to bed. They let it slip. The manager ended up getting baptised or ice bucket challenge or a bottle of water. Last minute scenes from Diakate, who gets sent off for a second yellow for taking his shirt off and now he has to miss the semi. Wow, unbelievable. But again, a ball into the box, a cheeky little flick from Diakate and it's 2-1, but then more drama at the end. So Ivory Coast are down to nine men because Kasuno and Diakate have been sent off and Mali thinking we've got to go for this now. There's maybe a minute or two left of the added time because a lot of the celebrations took it up and Buaki's gone wild. And then what happens? Mali get a corner, two men, three in the box and the Egyptian referee blows a whistle. Mali are fuming and Traore, Hamari Traore gets sent off at the end after the final whistle, it's all gone mad. But I'm sorry, Traore, you got yourself to blame. You had more than enough time against 10 men to win that. So Cote d'Ivoire are some asset in this after getting three points in the group stage, getting twatted 4-0 by Equatorial Guinea. Wow! And they will face DR Congo, who dismantled and dispatched Guinea, despite being 1-0 down from the penalty from Mohamed Bayo. And I have to say, the Algerian ref, Gorbao, what was he doing? That was never, ever a penalty for Guinea. What was he doing? It's never a pen. It's a... A laughable decision, I'd like to say, but I'm glad in the end it didn't matter. Instant response from the DRC. Of course, people it had to be Chancel and Bemba, the one who said, leave the justice to God, la justice de Dieu. Um, wow, just of all people, I'm glad it was him. He rocketed in that equaliser, and from then on, DR Congo dominated. They got the pen, which I suppose makes up for the silly pen Guinea got, and I'm glad back on Boo didn't step up. Um, Wissa stepped up to take it this time. Much better penalty than the one that Kombu bottled against Morocco. And DR Congo finally won a game after 90 minutes. Another team with three points. So Cote d'Ivoire and DR Congo meet in the semis. Both who got three points in the group stage. One of those is going to be in the final after getting three points in the group. Madness, isn't it? But we love it. Thing is, is Mbemba got more goals than back on Boo? I can't remember. He might have, you know. Quite extraordinary if so. But, um, but yeah, I think Wiss is having a good tournament. Maybe not as good as the Congolese would hope, but you see again the impact of Banza coming on. And what about the last goal? That Masuaku three kick, it's no fluke. I see him do it for West Ham against Chelsea. It's so good. And that was against Mendy, another African keeper. You spot the keeper off his line, he's thinking it's coming in. No, you trick him, it leaves a gap, put it in the other post, bang, DRC, 3-1. And again, that's a repeat of the semi-final in AFCON 2015, where Ivory Coast saw off DR Congo and Congo will be looking to get revenge against the Ivorians, who just seem to keep finding a way. I mean, Mali was so much better, so much better. Senegal again, they just sat off, they should have beaten them. I don't know how they're still in here, it's going to be down to DR Congo to see off Cote d'Ivoire and stop the final, where everyone seems to think it's going to be a repeat of the group stage between Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire. So four teams left, who's going to win it? Nigeria, Ivory Coast, South Africa, and DR Congo, the four out of the eight teams that had won it before, won their quarterfinal, the four teams that had never won it before, lost their quarterfinal, experience showing there, but who's gonna lift this title? I mean, Ivory Coast, I've got a guy in charge for five minutes, who's beaten Senegal and Mali at a tournament in the knockout round, it's quite extraordinary. So, who's gonna win it from here? Let me know, we look forward to the big semi-finals on Wednesday, and I'll see you next time.